Hey, Belinda, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Good, good. To everyone listening today on Burn the Ship, we have Miss Belinda Green with Acoma Events. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. Well, what we are doing today is just trying to find out more about you and the reason why someone should choose your service. Because what you do is you help to feed people, which is awesome. You help provide them with magnificent events with your balloons and things like that. But we want to dig a little bit deeper and find out why they should choose you when it comes to that particular service. Because you know, here at the MP Group Burn the Ship, we have always focused on bringing value to people. So what we do is we we're face-to-face networkers before. That's when we met. You know, we were just out and about uh, trying to network and learn more about each other. And then when COVID happened, that ended. So what we did is uh, we quickly, you know, pivoted over to doing the online networking, the Zoom calls, and helping businesses to still be able to communicate. And, you know, we definitely appreciate you being there. You've been there with us for a long time. And that kind of transitioned over to what we're doing now, continue to bring value to our networking partners by doing these podcasts so you can share your message with others. So just going to ask and try to find out that why and then a little bit about you and then we'll go from there. Does that sound good to you? Sounds great. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, we were talking earlier and you say you're from New York. Uh, Tell tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was born and raised on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, lived in Harlem for 17 years before coming to Georgia, Um, and pretty much was a real diehard native New Yorker. Okay. One day I decided to exit. Oh, I get it. I get it. Now, talking about New York and talking about Harlem, you know, you know, I've seen all those great movies, Harlem Nights, and I've seen others like uh, Coming to America, you know, so I've seen those type of depictions of those types of things. Are all those things true or are they a little bit overemphasized? Well, you know, they're going to do a little bit more for television to make it good. Mm-hmm. Um but some of the stuff is not that far off. Okay, um, okay. Harlem Nights goes back into mm-hmm. the early days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, Coming to America is a little more recent. Okay. But that was Queens, and okay. I grew up in Manhattan. Okay, so okay. it's a whole so, different whole different situation. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that's good. I always like to ask, because I've been up there as a child, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't know. I think we have family in Buffalo, and oh, yeah. we kind of had to go up further, but we stopped back through. So I never really spent much time there. Right, so in the on, city yeah. itself. So the only thing I can do is see what I saw on TV. <laughs> but I got a real live New Yorker here. So I That's just wanna, right. Just want to talk to you about it. Well, good. Well, good. While you were up there, so you were, what were you doing up in New York before you came down? Well, when I started out, I mean, after college and everything, I was in the legal field. Okay. I was a legal administrative assistant. And I moved on up to becoming a law office manager. I used to actually manage a Wall Street law firm. Okay, okay. And um, stayed in the legal field. That's what I went to school for. All right. And um, I stayed in that field for about good 20-something years. Oh, nice. And um, then just started feeling that entrepreneurial bug bite. Okay. And I started getting interested in business and got kind of tired of working in law Lawyers can be very demanding, very yes. difficult. Yes, and yes. I just got tired of the pressures and demands. And I was a single parent. I okay. had two children. Okay. And the hours that I was putting in in these law firms was like killing me. Yeah, I can and only imagine. My kids were like, Mommy, where are you? Right, <laughs> you right. know, that Makes kind of sense. thing. Makes so sense. I finally said, I got to do something that will, you know, kind of keep me a little closer to home and not have the crazy hours. I mean, one law firm, I actually had like a fold-up couch in my office, and my kids used to have to come in there and be on the couch and stuff while I'm working because the pressures of the job were just so demanding. Right, right. Well, you know, as people are listening, that is one thing early that they can see that you're not afraid of hard work and making sure that the projects are taken care of. So you guys keep that in mind because she will take care of your event. Now, um, you get ready to transition out of the the law field. Mm -hmm. Now, you're in New York, and we are way down here in the South. (laughs) So so how did that huge transaction uh, transition happen? Well, um, I always love the country. 
Even as a little girl, my mother sent me to summer camp every year. Okay. So from age 8 to 17, I even went is that long and became a counselor. Okay. So I went to summer camp, sleep away mm-hmm. camp every year. And I fell in love with the country and the outdoors. So I always said, one day I'm going to live in the country. Okay. So I guess that's what happened. But before I left New York, I had started a business in a mini mall that was located directly across from the Apollo Theater. Okay. I could literally look out the door of the mini mall and look straight into the Apollo Theater. That's how close it was. Awesome, awesome. And so when I first started out, I did a typing service. People always needed letters typed, and I always had, like, a really good knack for grammar and spelling and things like that. And I would always notice how badly people would spell things and how they just throw words together. So I said, there's got to be a way I can help people as far as that. So I started this typing service. And then people would come to me for letters, reports, um, term papers, anything right. they needed. Okay, okay. And because I used to do that in college for some of the guys on the basketball team and stuff right. like that. Right. They needed their papers typed and all I that. I get it. Good thing we didn't ask what school you went to and found <laughs> out when boys playing basketball. But <laughs> that's okay. We ain't going to probe. We ain't gonna pro. we ain't little gonna pro. tiny college yeah. in Connecticut. Okay, okay. All right. We'll put so, that on there. <laughs> so um, I started out with the typing service. Then... A long time ago, when people were getting married, they used to go into the stores, and there was these huge books full of wedding invitations. Okay. And you used to pour through those books and pick out your wedding invitation. So then I added that, the typing service. Then I went into the wedding invitations and business cards, all kind of printed materials. promotional stuff. Right. Then from there, I added um, what you'd say, like, small party supplies, and greeting cards and gift wrap. But my focus was on ethnic greeting cards because you couldn't really walk. This was in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't really walk into a Hallmark store or one of those places and see cards with people on it that were of color. Right. So I said, there's got to be a way to, you know, really hone in on that. So I found these African-American families that had started their own greeting card companies. Okay. And I used to get cards from them. I mean, beautiful artwork, beautiful, you know, sayings inside the cards. And then at that time, Hallmark even started what was called the Mahogany Line. And I know a lot of people know Mahogany Line. Absolutely. But um, I did do a little bit of Mahogany, but I wanted to support more of those black businesses that were really trying to get their cards out on the market because Hallmark, as we know, is not a black-owned yeah. business. Right, right. So I had about three other companies that were black-owned, and I used to you know, promote and sell their cards, and they had gift wrap. And then um, I got a little crafty, mm-hmm. and then I started making um, cake tops for wedding cakes, okay. favors if people were giving out favors at their event or something like that. So, so these are the, like, the things you blow or the... When you say the um, favors, what were those? The stuff you give away to your guests as a memento of having a, been at your event. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, like a whistle with their name on it or something. Or, yeah, or like, um, if say let's say it was a baby shower. So I'd do like a little plastic booty, mm-hmm. and it'd be filled with candy. And the candy would be in like a little netting thing. Okay. And then it would have the person's name, like, say Barbara, Barbara's baby shower and the date. And then that person would get to take that home as a souvenir of having attended the baby shower. Okay, so we're in the mini mall. Uh, We are providing the typing service. Uh, The business is starting to morph and grow. So now you're doing the the party favors and the giveaways. Uh, What what happened after that? I added balloons. And then uh, the Apollo Theater used to get me to come and decorate their sound stage when they were having different events as well. Okay. Sylvia's, which is a big, well-known restaurant in New York, um, at that time anyway, um, they used to have a separate party room that people had events. So I used to do balloons for them, too. Okay. So then I started thinking about, hmm, I want to move. I want to get out of New York. All right. So then that's when I came down to Georgia. But right off the bat, not knowing and coming to an area where I didn't really know things, I wanted to kind of 
feel my way around first. So I went back to law. Okay. And I worked in a law firm for five years in Sandy Springs. But then I couldn't take it anymore right, again. Right, the itch, right. the yeah, itch you said, had to get scratched again. <laughs> yeah, you said, I've already done this. You right. know, I already know where it's going to take me. Right. You know, and I've already started with my entrepreneurial process. Right. So you said, hey, look, all right, thank you guys for letting me get on my feet. And now you started. Is that when you actually started a common events or did you have it up um, there in New, in New no. York? No. In New York, it's funny. The company in New York was called Celebration House. Okay. Because okay. I had a physical location. I had a retail shop. Okay. okay. And so it was supposed to be Celebration House that you could come to for all of your celebration needs. Mm-hmm. So that's why it was called that. So when I got to Georgia, I guess I got a little more sophisticated. And I said, well, I don't want it to be called Celebration House. I want something different. So I started doing some research and tr- started trying to figure out, well, I don't want to call it Belinda's anything. Right. I don't want to use my name. So in the Ghanaian language from Ghana, they have these things called Adinkra symbols. Okay. So in these symbols, one of them is called the Akoma, mm-hmm. and it's in the shape of a heart. Okay. And I said, well, let me see. What does this mean? So I looked it up, and it meant patience and endurance. Okay. And um, it also meant from the heart. Mm -hmm. So I said, look at that. That's it right there. Okay. The minute I saw that word and saw what it meant, that was it. Right, right. So when you take a look at, uh, again, you know, trying to figure out why, (coughs) you know, someone's going to go along with you, you know, Mm -hmm. for your service, we know that you're going to work hard. You're going to take that task to the end. And then when you got ready to name the business, you were thinking, you know, hey, listen, whatever this people are doing they're going to need me to have patience and and really care about what it is that's going on because for them it's a super stressful situation even if they're throwing a party it's still stressful because they want it to be right and what people can know is that you know you actually care about it instead of it just being a another run-of-the-mill thing so and at that time i was starting to do weddings okay and you need patience and endurance when you're dealing (laughs) with brides yes so that was kind of the hook as well i said yeah, what I'm doing, I really need to have some patience and endurance. Okay. I was actually doing wedding planning at that time. I don't do that anymore. Okay. It's just too Just taxing. too much going on to oh, it. Oh, yeah. I had one bride that used to call me at midnight like it was the middle of the day and think that I was supposed to just get up out of bed and yeah, just, just do whatever. whatever she wanted. Well, you know, good thing about <laughs> when we have these discussions, we do try to focus on who you're looking for, but at least we know who you are not necessarily <laughs> looking for, you know, of course, we can refer you to someone else if you have that. So, well, I'll still do weddings okay. as far as the services, okay. but I won't do the planning. The planning yeah, of it. Okay. That's a whole nother beast right there. Okay. Okay. So, so moving into the things that you can do, tell us a little bit more of who would you say is that target, you know, and, and what is it that you're providing? So tell us what you're providing and who that target looks like for you. Okay. Well, a comedy event serves both personal and corporate events. So we can pretty much serve anyone. Um, we provide full service catering. Okay. So that could be anything from breakfast. If you were having a corporate meeting and wanted to have breakfast for all the attendees, a luncheon, if you wanted to do a box lunch or if you wanted to do a full buffet lunch, a full sit down dinner or any other type of dinner meal, you know, for any type of event. Okay. So we provide all the meals, or if you just wanted party hors d'oeuvres, that's something, another thing. You okay. Know? So pretty much, I mean, we're not a gourmet caterers, so um, we don't do all the foo-foo stuff. Okay. Um, we really do more of a, my focus is soul food, more of a down-home meal. Right. You know, the f- like people say, what how Mama and them used to cook. I understand. So <laughs> I understand. that makes sense. That makes sense. Understand. So that's kind of my niche as far as catering. But I mean, I will do a sandwich. Okay. I mean, okay. you know, we'll yeah. do bacon and eggs. Yeah. You know, so, so it's, it's not just soul food, but right. you know. Yeah, it seems as like you'll just find out whatever it is that you like the particular client wants, right. and then you'll just say, "Hey, look, I can get this. Let's work together and let's figure it out." It's not. You're going to get this one thing or get this one thing. Right. You try to figure it out with And it. I mean, I stay in my lane. I'm not a Cajun cooker. I don't know anything about 
uh, Louisiana food okay. or okay. etouffee and all that stuff. So right, right. You just do what you yeah, know how to do. Right. I stay in my lane. I do what I need to do. And right. I mean, most people like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I love it. You know, I've been loving it since the moment that I had it. You know, so so we have an idea. You know, of, you know what you're going to be able to prepare, which they'll get your information. They'll be able to look through the website. But geographically, you know, where are you trying to target for your geographical area? The Metro Atlanta area. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go all the way to South Georgia. Okay. I mean. I mean, if somebody really wants something down there, I mean, we can try to accommodate it. But um, my main air- geographic area is the Metro Atlanta area. I mean, we'll go to McDonough. We'll go to, you know, North Georgia. But um, I'm not trying to go like three hours outside of okay. the Metro okay. area. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense when it comes to the catering, you know, and as far mm-hmm. as the events part. Now, something that I realized you were doing recently is with on Sundays. Tell us a little bit what you're doing on Sundays. Well, I started about six weeks ago and came up with this idea of Sunday dinners. I know a lot of people these days, they don't take the time to sit down with their family and enjoy a meal. I know most people growing up, If you didn't eat dinner together any other night, you sat down on Sunday, even maybe your extended family came and everybody had a big meal together, just Mm -hmm. like as if it was a holiday. So I started thinking, you know, we need to bring that back, especially with COVID and everything and people being shut in. Sunday dinner would be a great thing. So I started this thing where every Monday I'll upload menus and you can go on my website and you can choose a menu. And the menus will stay up all week, and you have until Friday at noon is the cutoff time. Okay. And then you can have the meal delivered, or you can pick it up, and that will be available every Sunday afternoon from 1 to 5. Okay, okay. And you just have, uh, is it just like an entree, some sides, and desserts? What you get, yeah, you get a meat, two sides, salad. You get a choice of bread. It could be cornbread or rolls. Okay. And you get a dessert as well. Okay. Okay. And those will fluctuate each week. The do- yeah. desserts will rotate. The meals will, you know, kind of rotate. Or I'll add more meals in Look and things there. like that. Yep. Look there's how that happened dinner. right there. Just jumped up there like that. I tell you, it's amazing how we do that. Isn't it? <laughs> hey, sure is. But yeah. So, you know, I, I definitely wanted to highlight that because when I, when I spoke earlier, when we met, you know, we met face to face at an event. And at that particular event, you had food there. And, you know, I am hooked on that macaroni and cheese. So (laughs) I'm just trying to share with everyone, you know, it's one of those things where if you want someone that's going to, you know, make sure to, you know, cook, you know, and bring it it right on top for you. (laughs) Cook and share, you know, share some of the things that they've learned over these years and really, you know, bring it from their soul. You know, you guys need to give her a shot. We focus on trying to find out who is that target client, how, you know, who we can get you out in front of. And we also focus on, you know, strategic partnerships, because with us, you know, we like to work with businesses who um, work with other business owners like CPAs, the decision maker or website developer. Talk to the decision maker. Who have you found uh, doing this for the years that you have is a good referral partner for you? Who, what does that person look like? Well, on the corporate side, it'd probably be more of like whoever handles the events for the business. Okay. Um, lately, I've done like some grand openings. People have had, you know, ribbon cuttings and things like that. Um, I did one last week. They just wanted sandwiches. You know, mm-hmm. it was an outdoor thing. They had the ribbon cutting. So I pre-wrapped everything so that people would just grab a sandwich and go okay that kind of thing um so it pretty much is whoever the person in the office i mean it could be an office manager it could just be an executive assistant whoever in that office handles whatever the company's events are okay let's say it was an assistant living the facilities uh you know like the the cruise director, I'll say, okay. like almost like on the love boat, okay. whoever handles special events and activities and mm-hmm. things like that. Okay. And on the personal side, I mean, 
anybody in the family that be thinking about giving something. I mean, I had a gentleman a couple of weeks ago. He and his wife were celebrating their anniversary. Mm -hmm. He contacted me. I just want a nice bouquet of balloons. They were having dinner at a restaurant, but he wanted these balloons to be on the table. So when they walked in the restaurant, the balloons would be there. And the restaurant was... Fine, fine with, with it. it. In fact, I walked in and they said, oh, we need your business cards. This is beautiful. Okay. So, okay. you know, I'm really pushing the springtime events right now. We've all got right. Mother's Day coming up. We've got graduations. We've got all kinds of events that people traditionally have in the spring. Right. So if you don't need the food, which is fine, because a lot of people have things at restaurants, I've got balloons. I've got other types of decor. Like I said, I've got favors, things that you can give away to have people just have a little memento okay. of whatever you had going on. Yeah, it seems as if you want to uh, have that special event, she can help you with that. Or if she just needs to be a part of that event and make it special, uh, just give her a shout for sure. And, you know, at the MP group, we always ask, you know, we do all that we can. So we so one of the questions that I am going to ask is how is it that uh, the MP group can help you on this your quest? How can we help you? Uh, just spread the word. When you okay. hear somebody talking about they're having something, mm-hmm. say I know somebody. Okay. Because Acoma Events was designed to be a one-stop resource. I think you may know and you know other people when they're having an event, they're here, they're there. They're everywhere, running around, trying to get everything pulled together. Well, I've tried to set up things to make it a one-stop resource so you're not doing all that running around, so you're not having to go here, there, everywhere. And if there's something I don't do, I can pull it in for you where you don't have to go get it. I'll get it for you. Mm -hmm. I had a couple recently that um, the gentleman was coming in town, bringing his wife for her birthday, and they were staying at an Airbnb. He wanted that Airbnb to be special and reflect her birthday. Okay. So this is outside of my normal scope. This is not on my website, what I did for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the things were, but I went into that Airbnb. I hooked it up with balloons. He wanted the bedroom to look romantic. I put rose petals all in the bedroom, put candles all around. I got some candles and put them in a heart shape. Okay. You know, different little touches like that. Then he wanted like a little candy buffet. He told me what her favorite candies were. I had a candy buffet, chocolate chip cookies, and a cheesecake sitting in the fridge. So these are all those kind of little things you can do. He had a good idea. Yeah, he he really did. Check out his playbook. And then I even had a sign made. He wanted some kind of a sign saying, so when they walked in the door, and this was a beautiful house, they walked in the door, there was a big sign saying happy birthday with her name on it. Okay. A personalized sign that they could take home and everything. Then I decided, let me get some fresh roses. That would be a nice touch. So I put roses on the table where the candy buffet was and also in the living room on the coffee table. So, you know, it's little things like that. I'll tell you, if you want your event to become (laughs) special, you'll need to give this young lady a call. For sure. You know, so that's great to hear, you know, again, that special touch, you know, that you put on top of things. And uh, that's the message that we want everyone to hear today. And as I mentioned before, it is about you. So when it comes to this segment it's the last word, Uh, we would like you to share if that is about your business, about life. Uh, It is your show. So let's hear your last word. Well, I just want people to remember that Acoma Events is a one-stop resource, that we can help you with anything that you need as far as making your event happen. It doesn't have to be the traditional event, as I just explained with the Airbnb. Any idea you have, anything that you want to do to make something special. I've also, I forgot to mention, just started a new thing where I can actually put the person's name on the balloons and make that touch even better. So if you're saying, happy graduation, Charlie, I can put that on a balloon. So it's those special touches. If you want special touches, if you want something that people are going to remember and say, wow. You want that drop dead moment, that wow moment when people come into your event. Acoma Events is here to make that happen. Awesome, awesome. So, Belinda Green with Acoma Events, how can the people get in contact with you? They can reach me. The best way I love for people to do is go on my website, which is acomaevents.com. 
And it will also give you the opportunity to subscribe to my newsletter. I don't bombard people with hundreds and hundreds of emails, but I do like to let you know what's going on, seasonal things, uh, let you know if I'm having any specials, let you know about Sunday dinner. So I will send out occasional newsletters and things like that. So it would behoove you to sign up for my newsletter. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much again for taking time out and spending with us today and sharing your message. So to everyone, please reach out to Belinda. And uh, again, we thank you so much for coming on today. And thank you so much for having me. It's right. been a pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>